Hey again, Devin here. Thanks for checking out my three-part series on DOM manipulation in JavaScript. If you're just getting into the series here, you may want to go back and watch the first video in the series. I'll pop a link to that video up and I'll also put one in the description below. In this video, we're going to be doing some more querying of the DOM to select elements. We'll get a little bit deeper into that. We are also going to be moving elements around on the page and we are going to create a new element in JavaScript and insert that into the DOM. Let's get started. Let's try something else now. I've refreshed to give myself a fresh copy of my page. This time, I want to take the headline and put it between these two paragraphs. I will flip over to the console the first thing I need to do is, again, select the headline. I know if we do query selector and select this elementor heading title, the first one of those is the headline. Problem is that's not good enough for this project because I want to take all of the containers of this headline along with it. This site is built on WordPress using Elementor and Elementor adds a lot of extra stuff to the DOM. So it can be hard to work with when you're doing DOM manipulation like this. It's a really good reason to keep your DOM as lean as you possibly can. In this case, I have decided to sacrifice being able to manually ensure I've got a clean DOM for being able to add content quickly, which Elementor allows me to do. So I've just got to deal with it. The way I can get to the outermost container is I'll just keep adding parent element until I see something that looks like it's too much. This still looks like it's only containing that headline. Let's go one more. Okay, that is too much. Now, I also want to capture this. This would not do anything for me. So. I want to create a variable, so I'm going to go back to the beginning of this line and declare my variable. This is going to be headline container. That's what I'll call this one. Now let's just look at that to make sure. Yeah, it looks like that's what we want. If I want to insert that between these two paragraphs, I need to find what is the container that contains these two paragraphs. I've inspected one of the paragraphs here and I can just sort of walk up through the DOM and I can see this parent above the paragraph there is the innermost container that contains both. If I'm going to put something between those two that is what I need to be working on. I can probably select this in a pretty similar way to the way I selected the first one because I bet this is the first Elementor text editor class. If these were further down the page, this would get a lot harder because I'd have to find a selector that's unique to select just that element. But in this case, it shouldn't be too hard. I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this first class. create a variable and I'm going to call it paragraph container equals document dot query selector. Oh, forgot my dot. Now let's see what that gives us. Paragraph container. That looks good. That is what we want. To insert between these two, I need to use a method that's going to sound kind of counterintuitive, I need to use insert before. The first argument to insert before is the node I want to insert. That is going to be the headline container. The second argument is the child. This is the element I want to put the node I've passed before. The best way I think to get at that is relative to the paragraph container itself. So we'll start with the paragraph container. I want to insert it before one of its children. So I'm going to use its children attribute. And this works sort of like an array. So which child do I want to insert it before? I believe the first paragraph would be children at index 0. 
and the second paragraph would be children at index one. So let's try to insert it before children at index one. Let's see if that works. Looks like it worked. Now we have our tagline between the two paragraphs. Next thing I'm going to try here is I'm going to change the text of this paragraph. I will start by figuring out the best way to select that paragraph. I'm going to just call this second paragraph document.query selector. Now I need a selector that is going to get me to that paragraph. I think that's the second paragraph on the page. So I think if I select p nth of type 2, I think that will get me there. Second paragraph. Looks like we're good. That's what I wanted. One note about this selector, p nth of type, it doesn't really do exactly what you think it does. It seems like it just selects the second paragraph on the page globally. It does not do that. It will select the second paragraph in each element. So for any element that has two paragraphs, it will select all of those second paragraphs. The reason it works for us is because I'm using query selector, which only takes the first match of this selector. And this happens to be the first second paragraph on my page. I know that's a little bit confusing. To give you an example of another thing that this might have selected if I use query selector all, this paragraph, I believe, also would have been selected. Actually, let's just do it and see what all gets selected. Document.querySelectorAll pnth of type. This is a little bit of a digression because this is really about CSS selectors and not about JavaScript, but I think it's important to note here. If we do this query selector all, we see we actually get three paragraphs, not just the one we selected. If I hover over this first one, that's the one we selected earlier. What's the second one going to be? I think it's this one. Oh, actually, it's this one. So this is actually not in the same container as these other paragraphs. But that's going to be the second one. And then the third one... I'm not sure where the third one is going to be. It is... up. Okay. It's right here. Moving on, now we have our second paragraph selected. I want to change the text of that. I'll use the same method we used before. I want it to say, thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Except, I'd like this to have strong emphasis, so I'm going to wrap it in a strong element. You'll notice that did not work. The reason that did not work is because text content does not support adding HTML. Let's try another approach. We can use the inner HTML attribute instead. And if I just grab this same text and put it here as a string, that will do exactly what we want. It has added the text we wanted, and it's also wrapped this in a strong element so that it gets strong emphasis. So in showing you that, I've actually shown you one method of creating new elements and adding those to the page you can change the inner HTML attribute of another element. This works well if you want to add a bunch of elements all at once because you can just add them in line in this string and they go right into the DOM, but only if you want to replace the entire HTML content of the parent element. If you don't want to do that and you just want to add a new element 
as a sibling of some other existing elements, this doesn't work really well unless you want to manually recreate all those elements too. Let's imagine now that we wanted to add something else to the second paragraph, and maybe this is emphasized, not strong emphasis, but just emphasized so that uh, we're going to use an EM element to achieve that. I don't want to get rid of what's already there. I want this to become a new sibling. That's going to be a slightly more involved process. The first thing I need to do is I'm going to create a variable. I'll just call it new EM. And I'm going to assign that the value of a new element. To do that, I'll do document dot create element. Now I need to pass in a string that is the element I want to create. In this case, an M. And there's our new M. When we hover over it, nothing gets highlighted on the page because this element doesn't exist on the page. This element only exists right now in JavaScript. Before I try to put it on the page, I will want to go ahead and give it the text I want it to have. Let's make it say, don't forget to ring the bell. Now let's look at our new M. Okay, that looks right. Fortunately, I still have this second paragraph variable that points to that same paragraph. I'm going to start from that, and I'm going to call this append child method. It needs us to pass in the node that we want to append. Appending simply means that we're going to add the element to the end. So that will become the last element in that parent. The element we want to append is new m. Once we execute that line of code, we get this new m added to the second paragraph. You'd really want a space in there, but as you can see, this method of adding does not do that. It just butts the new element right up against the old one. Let's take a look at new m again. That variable is still going to point to the same element, which is now in the DOM. So when we hover over this, it's going to actually highlight the whole paragraph, but at least you can see where this element is in the DOM. It's just at the end of that paragraph. In this case, I've done this, and I don't really like the fact that it just butted the two elements right up against each other, so I think I'm just going to take it out for now. Let me demonstrate how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. I still have the handle on that new M element through the new M variable. And I'm going to call this remove method, which just takes it out of the DOM. We can see I still have a handle on that element in JavaScript, just the element is not in the DOM anymore. All right, we're going to stop there for now, but come back for the next video where we're going to be learning to interact with forms. If you've ever wanted to do some really advanced form validation using JavaScript, that next video is going to be for you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, and I'll see you then.